Uriah Hall has announced his retirement from mixed martial arts. He posted this to his Instagram. In the caption, he wrote, It is with great sadness that I will be stepping away from the greatest sport in the world. I'm going to miss the incredible UFC staff that has become like family and the mentors I have met along the way. The UFC has given me the best opportunity to step completely outside of my comfort zone. Throughout the years, I've gone up against some of the best in the world at the highest level. Although I did not achieve the rank of world champion, I've acquired some of my greatest achievements from mixed martial arts, and that was facing my fears and being a champion in life. I want to thank the incredible fans. You guys made the sport what it is today. It is important to have the right people around you that care for you and encourage you to become a better version of yourself. I want to thank my team, my coaches, my friends, and my family for always standing by me. You have all been the driving force that encouraged me daily. Lastly, I specifically want to thank Dana White for giving me the opportunity to collide with modern day gladiators. Thank you for always supporting me through the good and the bad. To the next generation, you are the top 1% greatest athletes on the planet. It will be a pleasure to watch where you all take this sport from here. I will be watching. Go forth. Michael Bisping and Anthony Smith on the Believe You Me podcast preview Dustin Poirier versus Michael Chandler. Smith labels it as one of the most fan appealing fights you can get. However, explains how both Poirier and Chandler have been inconsistent as of recent. I love that fight. I think it's the right fight for both guys, uh, like in the rankings and kind of where they're at. As far as the, the fans, that's one of the most fan appealing fights oh. I think you can get. Um, you know, to be honest, I don't know. I, I could give you all the breaking analysis and we could break it down skill set for skill set. But to be fair, at this at this level of their division, where both these guys are, neither one of them have been super consistent. So. The only thing that's consistent is their likability and their excitement. Like, you know you're going to get a fantastic fight. You know you like both guys. You know it's going to be a barn burner. But, like, you know, Chandler, you know, there for a little bit, a little bit was having some trouble with his chin. He was taking damage. He was getting hurt. And, you know, he was looking good. But then he would take a hard shot. But then he goes in with Gaethje, gets hurt early, and then just gets his head beat on like a speed bag and just takes them all so yeah but what a fight know, that was though what a oh god oh it was be- one of the best fights i've ever seen but even and then poirier you know like we all considered him the uncrowned champion and and you know he should go in there and he's got every skill set in the world to beat Oliveira, and then he looks great but then you know Oliveira gets to his spots and so it's they just haven't been the most con- i don't think we've seen the best version of either one of those guys recently yeah yeah i don't think and i don't mean that as a knock i don't mean no, that as a no, knock. No, they no, just no, they no, just no, had no, a tough course. they've had a tough couple fights so yeah um i i'm excited for that i i think that's the right fight for both guys yeah and as you said what a fun fight that will be they always deliver yeah. you know because as you say always. chandler I mean, man i mean that fight with tony ferguson i mean again got dropped mm-hmm. you know got, got he got dropped right did he get dropped yeah, i think yeah, so yeah early yeah, yeah. yeah he got dropped early then he landed a big takedown and then he knocked and him. maybe knock out of the god year oh knocked him the f- out what a shot seen that, that picture was. of tony's face yeah yeah where it's, it's all squished and oh hmm. yeah yeah no but they said he looked like a chicken nugget he kind of did no offense tony ferguson hope you well buddy <laughs> ahead of his fight against dominic cruz this weekend Cheeto Vera reveals that he originally wanted to fight Piotr Jan, however, Piotr turned him down. Speaking to Ariel Hawani, Cheeto said Piotr Jan, that fact, declined the fight because he was eating pizza in Italy. And he said, oh, I don't have time to make the weight or I don't have time to prepare. If I'm that easy money, why don't you just say f*** it? I finished my slice and kick your ass. He declined the fight. He said he wants to fight in November, October, so I was like, you ain't that cool to wait for you, buddy. So I was like, I want action. I want to fight. I want to make money. Let's go. They went, well, he declined. You want to fight Dominic Cruz? I was like, sure, why not? Why am I going to lie? There's no lies. When you speak the truth, you don't need to remember anything. So yeah, that's what happened. That's not talking. He just didn't have the time. He was doing a little trip in Europe. Good for him, dude. Good for him. On comparing the two opponents, Cheetah continued just as equal. There's no better, no less. Dominic's a little older. Let's keep it real. He probably won't keep up the way Jan will. But it's still a fist fight, dude. You can break your pinky and you're f***. A cut can change a fight. So I'm not thinking this is going to be any easier. I'm f- waking up every day thinking this is going to be the hardest, bloodiest fight of my life. But I think that about every single guy. Kamaru Usman breaks down why he believes Conor McGregor will never be a champion again. Kamaru said he's not necessarily done, but he's done as a champion. This is my perspective, because when I fight guys, I study their hearts. When I watch fights, I watch their heart, and for me, he's done. He's done because I don't know whether the goal was to get the money. I don't know if that's what it was, because there's a story about him. He was broke. For me, it seemed like it was about not being broke. 
getting money. So I understand that. Now he's not broke, but how are you gonna be a champion? Because that's what drove you to become champion. Because you didn't want to be broke. Now you're not broke anymore. Islam Makhachev says that Charles Oliveira calling out Conor McGregor is embarrassing. Islam vs. Charles goes down at UFC 280 for the vacant lightweight title. Islam also says that the UFC threatened to replace Charles with Michael Chandler if he didn't accept the fight. On the DC and RC show, Islam said Charles is very good. He has a good win streak. He beat a lot of tough opponents. But for me, it's embarrassing when the UFC lightweight champion asks for someone like Nate Diaz or Conor McGregor, who last won like five years ago. Nobody remembers when these guys win some fights. He tried to call for Diaz, McGregor, but he forgets my name. When they ask about me, he says he needs money or something like this. But when he fights with Dustin Poirier or Justin Gaethje, he doesn't think about money. Now when he says he has to fight Islam, he either tries to say I want to fight in Brazil, I want to fight in the end of this year, or I need some money. Yeah, he's making excuses. This is embarrassing because he said Islam has to fight one more time or something like this. But UFC told him, hey, if you do not take this fight, we're going to give the chance to Michael Chandler. That's why he took this fight. He lost in the UFC seven times. He's not going to be upset if he loses one more time. People finished him seven times in the UFC, and this guy's champion in my division. I'm very upset because of this. Everybody who says Dustin Poirier or Justin Gaethje or other guys, they're all guys that are old. They have money, they don't challenge. We have new blood. Me, Gamrop, and Neil Dariush, these guys are really tough guys for him. Because Dustin Poirier or Justin Gaethje, they're never grappling, just striking. That's why this is an easy fight for him. But he knows Islam Makhachev is a very hard fight for him. All fighters who we beat, all striking. I'm gonna take him down very fast. Listen, Tony Ferguson had a little bit of grappling, but he couldn't finish him. Tony Ferguson was a hard fight for him. He fought all three rounds because Tony Ferguson knows something about grappling. Not too much, but he knows something. And that's gonna wrap it up for the news. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post future ones. Here are the three top comments from last video. These comments are in reference to Tony Ferguson training at Jackson Wink. The first one's from Club Ambassador. He says, I feel bad for Tony. The UFC shelved him in his prime and kept him away from Connor for years. I still think that's the fight to make. The second one says, I actually liked Tony's latest camp with his longtime coach and a few select partners. I'm afraid Jackson Wink isn't the right move. And the final one says, feel like Connor and Tony suffer from a lot of the same issues, stubbornness. It's not that they aren't capable of performing at the highest level. They're just stuck in their ways and don't want to evolve slash adapt to the sport's new standards. Feel like Jackson Wink will help Tony get over this. Great choice. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured on the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. If you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen to get caught up. And make sure to go subscribe to our second channel where we post our exclusive MMA interviews.